<laughs> Hello, I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind and other home energies. Got a little update for you. No, somebody didn't steal my motor. Anyway, where this clamp is right here, I went ahead and tapped the pole upward and then I pulled it out of that slot so I could take it sideways because that one right there is at just a little bit of an angle and gets looser as I pull it over this way and lower it or down. And when I got it down close enough, I disconnected the wires. Uh, it wasn't windy, there is no wind. Some really cool clouds though. But anyway, uh, the prop wasn't spinning, that's no deal. I went to see if it would spin up and my amp meter went going all the way to the left. That's a little bit more than what this thing uses to spin it up. And it, as I held it there a second, uh, the needle, needle didn't start coming back like this. So that means there was a short. So I lowered it down, disconnected the wires, separated the uh, little gap there at the very bottom of the PVC and slid the motor out after I uh, disconnected the wires. One other thing, right here you can see where the pole is rubbing off on here, but no damage to the insulation. Looks real good, it's just kind of looks like pencil lead on there. I clipped these two wires because I didn't want to short the wires on my wind turbine. And this one was hung on a screw up there, which is a ground. It wasn't ground, it wasn't anything. But anyway, that was holding the wire up and making sure it wasn't getting pulled down. So I'm going to put a rubber grommet around the top there. We'll show you what the, what the deal is with the short. No, the motor was not blown. Okay, well there's the motor laying up here. If you notice these wires have a nice little curly cue on them. They were twisted. This motor had been slowly turning over time with vibration. And this little edge, this little edge right here is pretty sharp. I put it on ohms and strip the two pieces of wire, put that on 200 ohm scale, and I'm showing 3.1 ohms. Before I was showing 0.2, so that was pretty much of a short. The only uh, resistance I was reading was the resistance of the wire. That told me we had it shorted. So anyway, stick this back on, D, uh, on voltage and DC right here, and put it up on the 20 ohm scale just because I can. And now that I've got this where it's not shorted, I'm going to have to do a little bit of rewire up here and secure in this. If I move this back and forth like that, and that's the prop up there, that whole unit slid out real easy after I took one screw out, which was set right behind it right here, also the one that I had the uh, ground wire anchored to. So we'll watch the meter, and as I rock it back and forth, I see voltage. It tells me the motor is good. What I have here, about almost two volts. So anyway, that's a good deal. That's a whole lot better than sticking it to the battery just to find out uh, and have the prop cut you. <laughs> so when it's unanchored like that, this is so sensitive you can just kind of rock it back and forth and get a volt or two, and you know it's good. So anyway, I got to do a little bit of work to this. I'll show you what I'm what I do when I'm done, and I'll stick it back up there, and I'll have power again. I guess them 40 mile an hour winds and gusts did okay. <laughs> Battery was definitely up. Anyway, as you can see, I am in my t-shirt. Been this way while y'all are moving your snow plows and snow blowers and putting up with big snow drifts. I've been fortunate. And I'm not shy enough that I don't thank God for that. And many good things to y'all and stay warm. Glad I'm not up there, but I do feel for you and been praying for you. I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind and Other Home Energies. Many good things to you and yours. Okay, maybe we can do this before the traffic comes. Brought it out here in the light and let the Jeep come up. I'll show you one of my old tricks as well. Remember this. This comes out of one of them projector screen TVs. The ones that got the Fresnel lenses that people keep throwing out. Well, you could either do it like this or put it right up to the camera. Come down and let it focus in. Get you a nice closer look at the wire. Kind of hard to need one hand for the magnifying glass. And one 
for the camera, so kind of tip this around a little bit. This, hmm, this little point where you see the crease in, that's where the red wire shorted out to the ground. Doesn't look too pretty. And got a little one here on the black one as well. A little hard to see. Yeah, I'm going to throw some heat shrink over both of those after I put some silicone on them. And then I'm going to silicone the hole up. And when I put it back in, I've got a hole here. And I've got a hole over here. And a notch right here. I'm going to put one screw behind this and one into this notch. That'll keep it from twisting from there on out. And then we'll be okay. Well, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. Alright, well I closed the garage door. I've got a couple pieces of heat shrink. This one heads all the way down to the brushes inside. And it's almost the size of the wire. Well, I know heat transfers. So rather than heating this up and making this end swell out more, usually the ends get a little bit wider than the middle of them. I went ahead and stuck that on. And then I cut two other pieces. And these are about that much longer than these. I don't have a heat gun here like I did when I was doing the solar. Same principle. Keep the heat moving. Do not overheat it. Now this heat should go inside. I'm going to take it home and do it a little bit more. There we go. Get it down to size. I should be able to see the other piece of heat shrink inside. It does not have to be shrunk inside there. I'm sure some hot Texas day might help it out. This is so I can put another piece on here. Slide it down. If I can get that side there to shrink down enough, I can get the next piece to slide on over. We'll see how that works. It looks like that's doing pretty good there. Alright, and two more pieces. No, don't cut the camera wire. If I want this to be a little bit longer than the other ones, there we are. And we're probably well now. Slide this piece on down. If you notice that inner one uh, shrank, that's pretty good. Maybe if I can find a much wider one than this, I can actually slide down over these two and heat shriek that up too. Three layers makes, ex makes this extra tough. Oh yeah, that one's going over. Not too far, but it's over. I bet I can get this one to go too. Maybe I can get this up high enough and heat that up a little bit. Let's pull this one back. A little bit of heat. Get nice and tight. I know from your point of view, it looks like I'm burning the fire out of that wire. And this ought to seal it up. It ought to be satisfactory, but I'm going to take it home and redo it. I've got a soldering iron that has a blowtorch as well. And I can jet it down in that hole. Some of these lighters have that same jet on them, but not this one. Well, that's mighty, mighty thick. And heat shrink is pretty tough. I'm going to stick a piece of tape down in this hole, pull these over to the side, and I'm going to take that sharp edge off of these. Then I'm going to take these, and I'm going to bend them back over here, and tie wrap them down like that. There's plenty of room between here and here, so that the PVC doesn't match these wires again, and they shouldn't get over the edge. Once I put the other screw here, and the other one in here, and also that piece of PVC has a slit that runs right down the bottom here. That's probably how it got pushed over to here. It just hung down and then got pulled over instead of staying back. I'll turn this a little bit, stick it in, and then stick the screw into here to lock it. So I'll go ahead and get one of them big hose clamps and stick it all the way around the PVC and tighten that up. And that'll clamp it down even harder. We've got another notch here. Two notches I have right here. So I can put a screw in each one of those and that should hold it down good, especially with the clamp making sure that the PVC is not going to spread. Anyway, so there's my repair. Show you a little bit more as it develops. About one more fat piece and I'll cut it in half. This one's down inside, down about here, almost to the brush. Notice the wire is getting mighty fat now. It'll be uh, almost twice its diameter. Just insulation with that straight ought to be able to shove us in here. It's getting mighty hard, not just because of the thickness of the heat shrink, because of the size of the hole that's left. There we go. That, what I call stout. That thing don't even want to pinch in between there. The oh, these are shrunk down and pretty secure. I don't think they're going to move. Hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, I don't think they'll get in the way anymore. They'll be just fine right there. <laughs> Not around these little edges off here. I'm Scott Brown, Greenwind, and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. Um.